Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> I know. All this technical stuff. And can you hear me loud and clear? I can. <laughs> you look pretty. I like your makeup. Thank you. I am drinking Hakushika. I was going to say, that looks like sake. It oh. is. Fermented oh. rice. Are you really drinking sake? I am. Oh, nice. That would get me so shit face. I'm kind of nervous. I am a little too. <laughs> I like never get nervous, but what do you do when you have this amazing individual on? I love that um, kimono thing. This is Athleta. Get out. All right. Well, I've been listening to Beyonce all morning, trying to get in. <laughs> have you? Dun, 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 yeah. Dun. Irreplaceable. I can't hit the note in that word that's like, it goes around to come. I can't do it. But oh, I good. Just don't. <laughs> Ty Hunter. Ready? Boop. Ooh, I'm doing the counter for us. Let's get it. It's Throwback Thursday time with April and Mercedes. Welcome to Throwback Thursday time. I'm your host, April Wilkner. And I'm your host, Mercedes Yvette. And today we invite you to join us on a throwback journey back to the 2000s with celebrity stylist Ty Hunter. Now, if you don't know Ty, he is a beautiful soul inside and out. A motivational speaker, soon to be author, tech entrepreneur, a loving father. Oh, Ty is a renowned celebrity stylist spanning two decades with Queen Bee, Beyonce, as well as creative director for multiple fashion collections. To put it simply, over the past 20 years, Ty Hunter has influenced fashion and culture with his iconic vision making him fashion royalty. Oh, he's here. I hear a doorbell. Is it a stylish sounding doorbell? It is. It is super stylish sounding. <laughs> Shall we let him in, April? Yes, please. Okay. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> I always feel like the dog and up at this moment. Like, I'm <laughs> Let me try again. Hello. Ooh, connecting. <laughs> There we go. I can hear you now. Yes. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? We, we are good. Thank you for asking and welcome to Throwback Thursdays. Well, thank you. I'm always on time. So. I yes, know. I know. I love that. I saw you in the queue. I was like, okay, wow. That's like very <laughs> yeah. rare for all of our guests. This is my, my light today. I, Don't I have like a whole ring light situation you, in my house. You are You're glowing. Light. You're glowing, right, April? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Came you. on. I was like, "Oh my God, your skin is just porcelain beautiful." Uh, thank you. Thank you. I love oh. your solo cup. Yeah. I did. I put on red, and I was like, "You know what?" They said it's a party. Why not? Just I love it. It is. So cheers. It's a party. Cheers, Ty, and welcome. Cheers. <laughs> no cheers. Thank you, guys. I'm excited. Yeah. And we always ask our guests, you know, what What are you drinking? What'd you bring? What's your poison? To be on honest with you, um, my uncle, like like last minute, I was like, oh, I need a drink, and I want it in a red cup. And um, he just made gin and something. I don't know. I kind of love that you are back in Texas, because I feel like we're getting, you know, the Ty Hunter the home. home Edition interview. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely um, the Home Edition. <laughs> yeah, going, going back to your roots. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, and on that note, we would love to jump right into talking about your throwback photo. So Let's that's... go for it. <laughs> Most people send like like something that's really safe, and you were just like of the decade and everything. Walk us through that moment in time for you. Tell us where were you in life, and also because you're an expert, please break it down for us by fashion choice as well. Okay. And that was one of my old modeling pictures when I was in uh, Houston, Texas, and it was actually in the year 2000. So what happened was I, mom and uncle. <laughs> we like it. It adds flavor. Try Bring some. them in. My son is going to come Please. in at any second. What happened was I was scouted to be a model. And so I ended up taking the pictures for, um, you know, putting together my portfolio for with the agency and stuff, and they loved me. And I just saw this tuxedo shirt, I loved it. It had like a little, and I had some leather pants on. I've always went against the grain uh, mm -hmm. when it came to fashion. I never liked trends and stuff. I always, uh, if it was like, you know, the, the higher brands, I, I would 
have a few pieces, but I always did high and low. I've always been into vintage and thrifting. Um, so that was one of my first modeling pictures that I took the very first picture. Like I, I, was, I was nervous, I was scared. Um, you know, I never did anything like that. And he actually called me off guard. He was talking to me, saying something. I was like, what? And that ended up being like my favorite picture of the thing. It was really good pictures, but that was my favorite one. Yeah, I've always been into fashion. People used to pay me to go school shopping for them. Oh. <laughs> wow. So you were just born in born into it. Yeah, um, and, and, and I never thought that it would be something that lead up to money, but it all happened when like I said, I was in Houston, Texas and doing visuals and stuff. And in the process, I met Miss Tina, Beyonce's mom. And No 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 was on the radio. So they were like neighborhood superstars. And we just connected. She reminded me, I ended up calling her other mother like immediately. We just connected and we built a relationship. So after knowing her and being in the different locations and stores, I would call her. She was like a client. And I met each girl from Destiny's Child individually. And Miss Tina just saw the connection with each girl. I was, I was, I'll be with Michelle one day and I wouldn't be like, oh, I was with Kelly yesterday. You know, I wasn't like a starstruck person. And um, she just, one day she said, I'm gonna get you out of here. When MTV followed them, they came in the store that I was working in BB at the time. And she said, I'm gonna get you out of here one day. Yeah, you know, BB was oh, like, no, uh, BB. BB. Yeah. you know, BB was like working. Like yeah. I was going to clubs and stuff. Houston, they'd be like, we got Ty Hunter from BB. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, but BB was such the place with the rhinestone shirts and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Thank so you. your claim to fame was um, after you did the Survivor video, right, for Destiny's Child? That was my very first job. Um, I had a day off from, about, as a matter of fact, I was working at BB in another job, oh, Office Max at the same time. Oh. I was a young parent and it was about, you know, money, money, money and making sure my daughter had a roof over her head. And so I worked two jobs and um, that's kind of how everything happened. And then I, I met Miss Tina at BB and like it was a, a change, like a shift. I had a day off from two jobs after she said that to me, like a month or two later, I called her and I was like, Miss Tina, hey, I have a day off. I'm just saying if you need any help with anything. She was like, baby, yes, I do. Can you meet me here? It's such and such and such. And at that moment, I was working immediately, working on the Survivor video and the Grammys. Oh my God, that's like divine timing. Yeah, I, when it became three, then it, it was me. I feel like that's what we call in like the tipping point. That's when yeah. everything in your life, meeting her in that moment, your trajectory yeah. completely changed, yeah. It's so true. It's so true. It's a blessing. And I'm just blessed and honored that she took a, a chance on a little country boy from Texas who had a dream and vision and, and never in my wildest dreams that I would think I would work with one of the top female artists and female group of all times. Yeah. I mean, we were talking before and we're, I was like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a little nervous to talk to you, which is funny because <laughs> no. I never get nervous. Yeah. No. And it's just, it's more so because your soul is so pure and do you recognize anything i'm wearing right now i see the necklace you gave me this the first the first time i met you and i kept oh it and, oh um, my god i remember yeah and you were like these are all omens and yeah. i yeah. thought it like i don't want to start crying but i just thought like wow he just gave me something that's such a piece of him Okay. Was it with the um with Miss Tina's yes. um on the, the photo shoot, right? Mm -hmm. For for Tyra, yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Tina did a fashion show uh for the collection House of Darion and me and Miss Tina had to address some of the models and it was something about Mercedes that just I don't know, you just a light. You're just a light. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yes, I remember that though. So it was it was such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Um so now moving on, you've styled for I guess, year like over 20 years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, with everything going on, um, I feel like it's important to bring up Black Lives Movement um, just because it's, it's in our fabric and I, it's time to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. um, so you basically have helped establish Beyonce as a full-fledged cultural icon through your artistic vision and your styling. Mm -hmm. um, so in response to what's going on, um, recently, uh, I'm not sure if you know, Lindsay uh, Peoples-Wagner from, uh, she's the editor of Teen Vogue, 
and mm -hmm. uh, Sandrine Charles, I hope I didn't butcher her name, she's a public relations consultant. They just founded the Black Fashion Council. And right. basically, um, for our throwback family, uh, throwback Thursday family that is not aware of this, because this is uh, relatively new, the Black Fashion Council was created to represent and secure the advancement of Black individuals in the fashion and beauty industry. Um, by releasing a yearly index score measuring diversity by partnering with several companies. So it's like kind of like LinkedIn, but like how diverse are you? Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, Ty, about getting your thoughts on um, this, especially because as an African-American stylist, I'm sure you've had to break through many barriers. Still breaking through them. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I first started with Miss Tina, like I, we couldn't pull clothes. You know, it, it took a while for us to pull clothes and, you know, independent women was the breaking point where people were, were looking, but Miss Tina pr pretty much purchased all those clothes with her money for that video, you know what I mean? So, and a lot of things were made. Um, so it was a hard, hard time for us when I started. So it was just, it, it just the whole thing of um, being black in the business, I would go to fashion shows once I was still to this day I'm established and I put in over two decades of proof that what I could do and I would go to show shows sometime and, and they would have me like I get my seat and I'm not front row so I'm like I'm not going to stay here I'm about to leave you just put a blogger who just came out yesterday in the front row it's my purpose and it's my duty to stand up now for the kids that are coming and the stylists that are black kids, the stylists that are coming after me just to get that respect. When I, when I first started and they wouldn't let me pull stuff from the showrooms and stuff, it was a lot of racist things going on. And um, I would see the designers out in different events and they was like, well, Ty, why you don't let my, the Destiny's Child wear my clothes? You don't like my clothes? And I'm like, well, I haven't had a chance to get to the showroom, but I already went to the showroom, but I said that in front of the person that didn't allow me to pull. And it's like, I could have threw them under the bus and I could have did all of that, but I believe in karma and I believe in the higher power fighting certain battles. And, but I did keep a mental note that you cannot, you know. So a lot of big things when they wanted to use it, I just kind of played off the energy of the people that were willing to help me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. you can forgive, but you don't have to forget. Yeah. I think in a way, when you discriminate against a group, it can unite them. Yes. And united, they can get inspired and choose to collaborate so that they can rise above and push against that discrimination. It's time for change and, and it's going at, and it's, it's dark times, but at the same time, when you're in a storm, you just gotta keep pushing and just know that it's gonna be a better day tomorrow and just know what your purpose is in the storm and just really focus on that and just better yourself. Yeah, self-love is the most important thing. I, yeah. And and it takes some people a long time to get there, you know, whether yeah, it it's from while. their family or, you know, things that happen to them in school. And, and I think that's an important note. You obviously have such a focus on your energy and your soul. And when you're a creative, when you're an artist, that energetic state bleeds into your work. And, yes. you know, I, I have to say, we have to talk about um, one of your collections because Mercedes and I are huge fans of it. Uh, your Palisades collection that you did. The Korean designer, Yoon Hee Park. I love Korean fashion. Um, I love, love, love. It's so edgy and it's like, I, to, to wear those pieces, it's like, I don't care what no one has to say. You have to have self-esteem and just like be that rebellious person and I think that's what fashion is I think we take fashion way too serious and we worry about what everybody has to say but I think individual style is just knowing who you are knowing what works for you and just playing on that and not caring and just loving it but to actually create a line with her was such an honor because she's so talented and she has an eye and she's not afraid of color I love color mm -hmm. I love you know flowy fabrics I love just that extreme and the Korean um, designers just give me what I need each time yeah. Well, that, co that collection, when you look at the images of it, it's, it's so you because it's so rich in life and vibrancy and, and it's uninhibited. Well, we love all the work that you do. Should we switch gears and play a little game? We love to play games. This or so. that. So um, whenever we're, we have friends over, we love to get to know them by playing games. Okay. 
and we have created a special game just for you. This or that, what is your inner Beyonce edition? <laughs> okay, are you ready to play? Yes, let's go. <laughs> okay, so which wild night out bay are you? Are you standing in your power, single ladies? Come, single ladies. <laughs> <laughs> or are you out on the prowl singing check on it? <laughs> I would definitely have to say single ladies. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay. Which coupled up in love bay are you? Are you the crazy in love sexy power couple? Or okay. are you the dun, 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 the old school romance love on top couple? I would definitely say I'm more of the love on top. I knew it. Uh, with a mellow, like, you know. Yeah, I'm like more, a groove. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess it come with age. But yeah, I'm more of a love on top. But Crazy in Love is like, to me, one of my greatest bodies of work because it was my chance to really show my, my you know, Miss Tina was letting me do a lot of the, the styling. And um, so and it, it was just a great moment. And I... I cried on that video shoot because I actually saw Beyonce transform into a woman. And that was just a moment. Like, it's, that's one of my favorite videos, too. And to, to, to start out with just a tank top, jean shorts, and a red top, and just let the fashion just grow, grow, grow. Um, I, I remember watching that video, wanting to be her, and buying that outfit. That video, and I think, like, Irreplaceable, we kind of, like, stripped down into just make it easier for the kids to copy. Yeah. Which is great because then it's so attainable. I remember yeah. um, reading like Vogue magazines when I was really little and trying to like make the outfits so <laughs> it could look a certain way because, yeah. you know, I, I'm originally from like a very poor area in New Jersey. Like my mom was a single mom. We didn't have a lot. But when we saw mm -hmm. like videos and like magazines, we we're like, oh, let's, let's, like, let's look like yeah. we don't come from here. <laughs> <laughs> People are now just realizing um, that the tank top actually had stones on it. Oh my gosh, that was the <laughs> yeah. best part. <laughs> yeah, it was all crystals, but like people are just not, I posted it because it was the anniversary. Yeah. Uh, so two days ago, I posted it and it was like, it was crystal, I'm just noticing that. And it was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was hot. Um, so our next game um, is like, we're, we believe in masculine and feminine energy. I think okay. that uh, makes a very balanced person. So, yes. um, which feminine power bay are you? When you get your in inner feminine power bay, are you independent woman? Or uh, are you who run the world? Girls. Okay. <laughs> girls. Strength in numbers. I would definitely say who run the world, girls. Yeah? Yeah, I, I believe in, you know, building and, and, and supporting my my core group of people. And, and I, I would, if I'm rising, you're rising with me. Is yeah. your blood type O by any chance? It, it is. I knew it. Because <laughs> <laughs> O gives out everything. Our final this or that inner Beyonce edition question is, which breakup bay are you? Are you okay. a all sitting in your feelings, irreplaceable. Bay, or uh -huh. are you a moving on in a flash? I am sorry. Bae. Moving on in a flash. I That's am right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one surprised me. Yeah, I'm a move on. Yeah. Well, thanks for playing with us. Um, we always have a closing question. April and I talked to you about your skincare originally because we just can't believe it. So we want to know what is the skincare secret? Just okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell the secret. Look, I use Latour Bisset. Latour Bisset is a line from Barcelona. Um, they have a diamond cream. Um, actually, Beyonce put it in the uh, song um, Upgrade You, Diamond Cream Face Show. Oh, yes. And, and, yeah, it's very expensive, but... <laughs> it works. <laughs> really? We have, like, some sunbeam behind you just glowing. So it actually worked in your favor because it's uh, like you. you have, like, some halo around you. Oh, you uh, have a diamond, you. Yeah, there's a diamond bling behind your head. Every time. All right. Hey, yeah. I can't see it, which is cool, but you <laughs>
Um, so Ty, we would love to be able to share with our Throwback Thursday family where they can follow you. Okay, um, Ty Try One. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything is Ty Try One. And you can find me there. My page is, is if you want to be motivated, if you want to be educated, if you want to just laugh and feel good. I, I Everything I do is it's called Ties Yellow Pages. My whole page is yellow. Uh, I want it to be a place to escape because the, the, the social media can be a dark place sometimes. And when I was going through my depression, I, I would put up quotes and, and stuff to make me get through it. And as I traveled for many, many years, I would go places and like, your Instagram helped me through a divorce. Your Instagram helped me through suicide. Like my DMs are like crazy right now. and and. The blessing is the shift is so great that I it's then and that that's how I know it's bigger than me because I've literally had racist people sending me DMs calling me the N word to now switched a little bit like oh you I've literally had people switch from calling me the N word to I've learned so much on your page I didn't know this and so I, I feel like that's a, when you have these platforms I can take pictures all day on someone else's jet I can take pictures all day you know, fronting and, and making it look like it's what it is. But I feel like I have a purpose and I have followers and I want to lead them in a great direction and the right direction as much as I can. And, and just let them know that you're not alone and I see you and it's going to get better. We just got to know, be there for one another. You, Ty, you're so inspirational and you're obviously such an asset to the community. And we just want to thank you so much for joining us on Throwback Thursday time. Thank you. You know, I, when you said I said anything for you, like I, I was like, you know, well. it was an honor to have you on our show because you're an iconic style innovator. But beyond that, you are such a beautiful soul. Mm -hmm. And that that is really what that's what we want here in our home in our throwback Thursday home. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. No, thank you. This is great. And anytime I'm here for you, ladies, and I'm so proud of you. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Cheers. Love you, ladies. Love, Love you, too. You. Thank you for watching Throwback Thursday time, where today we got to spill the tea with Ty Hunter. Open your heart and soul. And then wrap it up with diamond cream. <laughs> Delicious. Bling! <laughs> what? Once more for the kids in the back. Okay. Thank you for... What are we doing this, <laughs> Jen? Thank you for spilling the tea with us Throwback Thursday time, fam. And on another episode where we spill <laughs> the tea. In this I'm episode, so hungry. Where Mercedes hasn't eaten enough and the sake is going to her head. We also spilled the tea with Ty Hunter, had a spiritual breakthrough, and learned about diamond cream. I think I'm drunk off Ty's aura. <laughs> I feel high after talking to him. Did I just meet a shaman? I think so. I think he like touched our souls with something. Seriously, that was so good. Love you. Stop. Love you too. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>